In this video, we're going to take part of a, an FRQ, and we're going to look at revolving about the uh, line y equals negative 3 with two curves. So let's uh, skip to part b is what I'm actually looking at. So uh, we have these two curves, y equals the natural log of x and the line y equals x minus 2. We'd like to find the volume of the solid generated when r is rotated about the horizontal line y equals negative 3. Well, if we put in y equals negative 3, notice that it's down here. Okay? And in comparison to the x-axis, it is 3 units away from the curves. So when I'm rotating about the line y equals negative 3, I'm going to have to add this distance to both curves. So from negative 3, if I go like this, I have my outer radius and my inner radius. So now I know that when I go to integrate, I'm going to have a pi. And I haven't found the bounds yet, but I know I've got my outer radius squared minus my inner radius squared dx. And my outer radius is the curve natural log x. So I can go ahead and say 3 plus the natural log of x, because remember, we need to add this distance 3 in order to get to the curve. And then I've got 3 plus the line, which is x minus 2. Okay? Now, from there, we would want to find our bounds of integration. And our bounds of integration could be found on a graphing calculator. So let's see if we can pull up a graphing calculator. And let's start by graphing these two things. Let me clear out what's in there. And we're going to start off by graphing the natural log of x. So natural log of x. And then our other function is a line, x minus 2. And if I just start off with a zoom 6 so that we have our standard graph, looks like that. And what we want to do with AP problems is we want to make our picture look like their picture. So we're going to do a Z box, zoom 1. And we're going to build a box that will hopefully match up with what they're doing. So here I am making my Z box. And again, we want to try and match up with what they've got. So there's one curve. There's the line. And that's pretty close. So let's go ahead and find that left bound. Remember, it's second trace button gets to the calc menu, option 5. We're on the first curve, and let's get to the left of that point, which is really, it's going to look like it's below, but it's to the left of it. Enter, and then the right. Enter. We don't want to guess. And we get an x value of 0.15859434. Very important not to round. 0.15, here, let me slide this over. 0.15859.158. 5, 9, 4, 3, 4, 4, 3, 4. And I'm also going to copy down the y value uh, because I might need that later. Negative 1.841, negative 1.841, 406, 406. So we've got a point, point one five eight five nine four three four comma. And I'm going to keep that around because in a later problem, we might use that. Um, now let's go ahead and find our rightmost bound. And our rightmost bound. So again, we're going to go second, trace, intersect. And we want to be closer to it, but still to the left. Always go left first, then right, because uh, we read left to right. And then let's go ahead and do the rightmost. And we don't want to guess. And we get 3.14619. 3 um, 3.2. 3.2. And I'm going to go ahead and write that one down, too. So we have 3.14619.32, comma, and our y value, 1.1461, 1.1461. One 
9.32. And that would be just in case in a later part of the problem we needed the y values. It's just a good idea that you don't have to repeat the process. Now, this particular problem was a graphing calculator problem, so you would now punch that into your grapher. So let's get out of graph mode and let's go math 9. Uh, we've got from 0 0.1585943434231461932. And our first function gets its own set of parentheses, 3 plus the natural log of x squared minus, and then our second function gets its own set of parentheses, 3 plus another set of parentheses, x minus 2, and that's going to be squared, and a dx. And so we're going to get a decimal value, 10.8857, uh, 10 10.885, Seven. That's usually enough, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it, the whole thing. So five seven five six seven eight five six seven eight pi. Now you can leave it in terms of pi, or you could go ahead and multiply your answer by pi. So times pi, and that would give you thirty four point one nine eight six one. Three, five, three. So either one would be acceptable, and if we check against that, uh, we get 34.198 or 199. Again, set up, and we just picked up three points on the AP exam.